A central processing unit, or CPU for short, is like the brain of a computer. It's what gets all the thinking done. And that makes it one of the most critical components of any system build. And I find that right there is enough to scare away some first time system builders because they just don't trust themselves enough to not mess it up. For some people, it's enough to get them to just go with a pre-built system instead. And that sucks because PC building can really be a lot of fun. That's what this video is all about. I've got this brand new Intel Core i5-13600K CPU, and I'm gonna show you how to get it properly installed into a motherboard socket. I think you're gonna be shocked at just how simple this is to do. The first thing we need to do is look at our motherboard and find the CPU socket. It's this big rectangular looking thing right here, and this is an LGA 1700 socket for the latest 12th and 13th gen Intel CPUs. Along the side of the socket, we have this retention arm. That's what's holding everything down and kind of locking it into place. That's what's gonna hold your CPU in there after once we get it installed. So the first thing we have to do is get that released so that we can open up the socket and gain access to it. So the way this works is you have to press down a little bit and push outwards away from the socket in order to release it because there's a little notch here that's holding it down into place. So we'll just go ahead and press down and you can see it just naturally wants to come out and push itself up. You can just guide it all the way up to the top as far as it'll go and then that's it. You've got your socket unlocked and then you can take the load plate which is this piece here that you just unlocked and you can just flip it upwards and now you have access to your socket beneath. Newer sockets from both Intel and AMD use what's called a land grid array or LGA for short. These types of sockets have all the contact pins right here on the socket itself instead of on the bottom of the CPU such as the case with a pin grid array or PGA setup. So once you have your socket opened up like this and the pins are all exposed, just make sure you don't actually touch any of them with your hands and make sure nothing falls into there. In general, I just recommend keep your workspace clean, pay attention to what you're doing so you don't have any accidents. Now we can get our CPU ready. They usually come in a little plastic package like this. Now if we open it up, the silver part that we can see right on top is called the Integrated Heat Spreader, or IHS for short. That's what's gonna make contact with the uh, water block or cold plate on the CPU cooler to make sure everything stays running cool and doesn't basically melt down into a pile of molten goo. And on the bottom, if we just take this out of here now, there's a whole bunch of little pads on there and that's what's actually gonna make contact with the pins that are on the motherboard inside the socket. So when you're handling a CPU like this, it's always a good idea to avoid touching the IHS and the contact pads. Your fingers can get oils or residue on there and that can actually affect performance in some cases. So what you wanna do is grab onto the green part on the sides like you can see I'm doing here and just make sure your fingers stay there and you should be just fine. So the million dollar question that most first time system builders have is, how do you know which way the CPU goes into the socket? There's a couple things that help out with that. The first thing is this tiny little triangle in the corner right here where my finger is. And then above that on these newer chips, they also print one right on the IHS, which I find helpful because I think it's just easier to see. And then the second thing is these little notches on the edge of the CPU. Also hard to see because everything's so small when you're dealing with these little computer chip parts, but there's little notches here. There's one, two, and then on this edge, three and four. Now, if we go back to our motherboard and look closely at the socket, you can see there's a little triangle right there on the protective shield, this little black cap that's there. And if I were to remove that, which I'm not gonna do because it's protecting the pins right now, there should also be one printed right on the metal layer that is the load plate. And then if we lift that up, some motherboards also have one printed on the socket itself right next to the pins down here. Also notice there's four little bump outs on the two edges of the socket. One, two, three, and four. Those are meant to fit into the notches on the CPU that we just looked at. So to get the orientation right, we just need to make sure the triangles and notches on the CPU line up with the triangles and bump outs on the socket. So in this case, the CPU will go in just like this. With the orientation correct, now we just have to lower the CPU into the socket and you wanna go straight down, not off on some weird angle or off on the side rake like that. You wanna go straight down and gently set it into the socket. You shouldn't have to put any force or pressure onto the CPU. It should just effortlessly drop right in. And I like to give it a, just a gentle little wiggle to make sure it's seated in there because sometimes it can be hard to tell from just looking at it. Okay, looks good. Now we can put the load plate back down over the CPU. And as you push that down, if you have one of these black protective covers on here, it should just pop right off from the pressure naturally. So there that goes. Okay, put that aside. And now we can put the retention arm back down. And remember, you gotta slide it underneath that notch. So press it down, push it under the notch, make sure it stays down, 
and that's it. From here, you can continue with your build. Just don't forget to install your CPU cooler. Some CPUs come with a stock cooler in the package, but a lot of the high tier SKUs don't these days. And I think that's actually a good thing because I don't usually recommend stock coolers anyway. If you're gonna go into a custom PC build and you're gonna build something reasonably high end, you're probably gonna wanna go with an aftermarket cooler. So if you're not sure which one to pick out, I do have some videos on this channel that you can check out, but at the same time, just do your research. Go online based on the CPU that you picked, figure out what's gonna be best for you and make a decision that way. There's a lot of stuff out there, air cooling, all-in-one liquid cooler, and even to the most extreme high-end custom loops. All right, guys, I hope this video helped you understand the terrifying process of installing a CPU. I hope it helped you realize that it's not scary at all. It's actually easy as long as you pay attention, be careful, and take your time. Check the description for more PC building tips and tutorials. I'll link other videos in this series down there for you. And get subscribed if you're not already so you don't miss any future uploads. And we'll see ya.